play. If you want to start a new game, select the pencil. If you would prefer to continue a game you have already started, use the arrows to select the image that represents your game. When you have made your choice, press Enter to confirm. Good. Write your name on the line. When you have finished, press Enter to start the game. That's great. His stones are so pretty. I hope that I have a rock collection as beautiful as his one day. It's a volcanic rock. I didn't know Grandad had ever explored a volcano. Oh no! What have I done? Oh, look! There was something inside the stone. That looks like a diamond. What's it doing in there? What's happening now? Wow! Look at that! Hello, Laura. Thanks for setting me free. I haven't seen daylight for years. A long time ago, I was the fairy's lucky charm. But one day, one of the fairies lost me in a cave. Later, a volcano erupted and lava flowed over the cave floor. I was trapped in the rock until your grandfather chipped me out of the hardened lava. He had no idea that a lucky charm was inside this lump of rock. I've been trapped so long that I've lost my powers. But now that I'm free, I'd like to start bringing luck again. Especially to help you, Laura, because it was you who released me. To do this, all my facets must be lit up, just like they are now. Would you like me to become your lucky charm, Laura? Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, yes, okay. That's great. Now, all you have to do to make me sparkle is to please the people who love you. By doing that, you contribute to everyone's happiness. Each time you make someone in your family happy, one of my facets will light up. And when all my facets are brightly sparkling, I'll become your very own lucky charm. You'll see, Laura, that making the people around you happy is fantastic. And when people are happy, wonderful things often start to happen. Well, that's the strangest thing I ever saw. I'd love to know what's behind this mystery. Anyway, I've always liked making the people around me happy. This should be fun. Okay then, pleasing people around me. Hmm, now where shall I start? You can pick up certain objects and put them in your rucksack. To do that, you go up to them and press the space bar. Elise's little spoon. You can look in your rucksack by pressing the tab key. Elise's bottle.
You can speak to people you meet by going up to them and pressing the space bar. Elise is all right for now. Use the arrows to take a look at all the different objects in your rucksack. To select or deselect an item, press the space bar. When you have finished, press the tab key to return to the game. You can use an object you have in your hand by going to the place you want to use it and pressing space bar. If you prefer to give the object to someone or to show it to them, go up to the person with the object in your hand and press the space bar. Elise is all right for now. Elise is all right for now. To open a door, stand in front of it and press the space bar. Hi, Tommy. Oh, he doesn't look very happy. Tommy, what's the matter? I took Daddy's binoculars without asking permission. All I wanted to do was look at the birds at the town gates. Honestly, I left the binoculars there and when I remembered and went back for them, they were gone. Well, somebody must have taken them. Somebody stole them. Oh, Laura, what am I going to do? Please, Laura, help me find them. Tommy, you should have spoken to Daddy about it. But, well, it's all right. I'll help you. Wow, that's fantastic. Calm down, Tommy. It might not be easy to find the binoculars again. But it's like a police investigation. And I'm a very good detective. You stay here. You never know. Someone may bring the binoculars back while I'm looking for them. Laura, I... <laughs> Thanks for... for... <laughs> Thank you. All right, Tommy. Good. The first thing to do is to go back to the place where the binoculars were last seen, the town gates. I'm on my way. In your house, you can open certain drawers and cupboards. Just stand in front of them and press the space bar. A bandage. Baby's nappies. You can access the main menu at any time by pressing the escape key. The big trunk full of odds and ends. There are books, old jewellery and a hat in here. Well, if it isn't my beautiful Laura. Hello. Well, if it isn't my beautiful Laura. Hello. A 
a telescope. Telescopes are really good and very easy to use. Just use the arrow keys. Then I can see wherever I want in the village. I can even watch other people. Dress and an old uniform. Hello, Laura. keeps her letters and her personal diary. These are Mummy and Daddy's clothes. If you want to run, keep the shift key pressed down while you move using the arrows. You can climb up or down ladders by going up to them and pressing the space bar. Thank you. 
cool. Hello, Laura. Adam? Hello there, young lady. Sweeping really makes you feel tired, Laura. I must be careful, otherwise I'll end up with a bad back, like the milkman. He's somewhere in the village not very far away, still unloading milk crates from his float. aren't inside. But there's a flower petal inside. How interesting. And this empty bottle of milk. I might be able to use it later. But at least I have some clues. I'm going to question people about these things. They might have some important information. Madam? Hey, Laura, 
I still can't get over it. I've just been to see the florist. She's brilliant. Her floral arrangements are fabulous. You should go and see her. She's not far from here. Her shop's just alongside the town square. Thank you, miss. Morris. Laura! Hello! Ouch! Hello, Mr. Morris. I found this empty milk bottle. Do you know who it could belong to? That's a funny sort of question. <laughs> I've sold several bottles this morning. I don't remember all my customers. All I can tell you is that that is, in fact, one of my bottles. Where did you find it? In the dustbin near the town gates. No, it doesn't ring a bell. But I saw Curly Q, the acrobat, this morning near the town gates. And I clearly remember selling him a bottle of milk earlier. There's no mistaking that funny face of his. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Morris. Thanks a lot. Not now, sweetheart. You mustn't eat too much between meals. You've just had a pear. And uh, don't forget, Charlotte. There'll probably be a huge cake at the village fete tonight. That's true. You don't want to spoil your appetite before the cake comes out, do you? I certainly don't. If the cake's anything like last year's, it will be delicious. Mmm, cake. Even better than an apple. Okay, then I'll wait. Mmm, yummy. Cake. Hello, Carmen. Hello, Laura. Isn't it a beautiful day? Hello, sir. Hello, Laura. Hi there. Hi. Hi there. Hello, madam. Hi there, Laura. This book's really good. Carmen the greengrocer gave it to me. You could go and see her if you like. She works not far from here. Hello, sir. <clears throat> I'll willingly stop my painting to help you, Laura, dear. And if you listen carefully, the way may become clear. Dad, I want to tickle the acrobat so he messes up his act. <laughs> well, what an idea. You don't do things like that. Why not? It'd be funny. It's just what the acrobat needs. You're not entirely wrong. But first you should talk to our acrobat when he's on his own. A lot of clowns and acrobats have their acts prepared well in advance. Morris the milkman told me that he saw you this morning at the town gates. My little brother lost my father's binoculars there. Did you see them? I've been too busy rehearsing for tonight to bother with binoculars. Uh, anyway, I go by the town gates every morning. But I remember one thing. I saw your dog sniffing around there this morning. Maybe he found the binoculars and took them back to your house. 
And would you keep that dog of yours on a lead? He petrifies me. It's the statue of Hype, founder of the city. He was a brave and valorous knight who saved his people from the evil knight. in his mouth. Maybe the flower could be a new clue. Oh, stop it, Max. I haven't got time to play with you. Now give me that flower. Oh, stop it, Max. I haven't got time to play with you. Now give me that flower. Look, it's the dog's toy. from this flower. Oh gosh, the petal that I found in the binoculars case fits perfectly on the flower. Good, let's look at the facts. The petal from the case belongs to this flower. So that means if I find the owner of this flower, I have a good chance of finding Daddy's binoculars. Violet. Hello, Laura. I found this flower with a petal missing. Did you sell a flower like this this morning? Mm. I sold a flower like that to Mr. Morris, the milkman. And that's not all. I also gave one to Theo to pin on his coat. Thank you very much, Violet. I'm getting close.
Hello, Miss Clara. My stars! It's Laura! Come on in. Make yourself at home. Miss Clara, I was just wondering whether this flower might be yours. Hmm, that is a very good question, Laura. Put the flower down here on the cloth so that I can have a look at it. Yes, it really is my flower. I lost it this morning when I was doing my shopping. I had it only a very few minutes. Theo gave it to me. Miss Clara, if I discover who found your flower, maybe I'll find Daddy's binoculars too. Can you help me? Of course, little Laura. I will look in my crystal ball. Ah, I see... I see a shadowy figure. But I cannot make out... I can also see your dog. Your dog! He's following the mysterious person and... He snatches the flower from his pocket along with the handkerchief. I can see... It's in the rose path. I... I can't see anymore. I hope that you can find your binoculars. That's all I can tell you. Thank you very much, Miss Clara. I'll go straight to the rose path. I might find another clue to help me figure out who the mystery person is. Thanks again. stuck to the hanky. It's the missing petal. The flower is now complete. Hey, there's something written on the hanky. It says Curly Q. Curly Q? But he's the acrobat. So the hanky must belong to him. Oh, I'd love to know more. I just have to find Curly Q. That's hype. He found it our town. I know all about him. He was a great knight. We've learnt about him at school. Did he do something special? Yes, he did. They say that hype could travel through time. It's true. He had a sword which let him travel through time and he freed the kingdom. He was very strong. Curly Q, everything points to the fact that you're the one who has Daddy's binoculars. I, um, I, it's that, um, uh, I... I've been looking everywhere for the binoculars and you didn't tell me. And you didn't take them back to my house. Now, give them back to me. They're my father's binoculars. I found them. Finders keepers, your little brother shouldn't have left them there. Hey, what have you got there? But, but you 
you've got my hanky! My name is on it! Give it back! Now! Oh, I found it, so it's mine! No! I... you... I... you... you're right! Uh, I'm sorry! Here are your binoculars! Please don't tell the people in the town! I'll make up for it, you'll see! This evening at the party, I shall give the greatest performance of my career! Give me the flower and the hanky! I'll take the flower to Miss Clara myself! I knew that it belonged to her! All right, all right! My little brother's going to be so happy! I'll go and give him the binoculars back straight away! Progress with the investigation, Tommy. I've already found some clues. I suppose nobody's brought the binoculars back while I was gone, hmm? No, not yet. <laughs> Look what I brought you, Tommy. The binoculars. But now I hope that you realize that you always have to ask permission before taking something that doesn't belong to you. Things don't always turn out this well, you know. Oh, that's great! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Laura! I'll go and give them to Daddy and I'll tell him the whole story. Thank you, Laura! I'm sorry to have got you mixed up in all this. Brilliant, Laura. You have lit up one of my facets. That's marvelous. Dad. Uh, oh. oh, it's you, Laura. Hello. I was asleep. It's uh, very nice to see you. Now listen, Laura. I decided today is the day to tell you about an extraordinary adventure I had a long time ago. Would you like to hear my story? Yes, please, Grandad. Right. First of all, no one's ever believed me before. People have even made fun of me, but one day I'll prove that I'm right. That's my greatest desire. I know that you'll believe me. Well, here goes. Many years ago, as I was climbing the face of a cliff, a little fairy passed me by. At the very moment I saw her, a gust of wind made her lose control of her wings and she fell into the sea. She couldn't swim. I dived in to help her and swam as fast as I could. 
when I got close, she climbed up onto my head and I swam with her back to the foot of the cliff. The little fairy thanked me. She was called Lumina. Without another word, she gave me this beautiful bracelet. She seemed to be in a hurry. Then Lumina flew away and I've never seen her again. This bracelet is the only souvenir of our meeting. I'm too old now to start looking for her. So, Laura, <laughs> I'm giving you this bracelet now. Maybe one day you'll prove that fairies do exist. Oh, thank you, Grandad. It's a wonderful bracelet. Oh, no, 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 but wait a minute. There's something engraved on the bracelet. It looks like a secret message. Hmm. Oh, it's written in a very strange language. We must get it translated. I know someone in the village who can do it, Miss Clara, the fortune teller. Go and see her. I'm sure she'll translate the message for us. I'll go straight away. Hello, Miss Clara. You may enter, my dear Laura. I am free. Hello, Miss Clara. My grandfather would like you to help us translate the message that's engraved on this bracelet. It's written in a funny language. With pleasure, little Laura. But first of all, in exchange, bring me an exotic feather for my collection. An exotic feather? Of course, Miss Clara. I'll bring you one straight away. An exotic feather. Hmm... The only exotic bird that I know of is Pico, my parrot. Look, one of P. 
Chico's feathers. Hello, Miss Clara. My stars! It's Laura! Come on in. Make yourself at home. Ah, oh, Laura! You have the exotic feather! Come closer and put it on my table. Now, put the bracelet on the table. Then I can read the message. Thank you, my little Laura. Ah, I can see something already. Listen carefully. This is what the message says. At the end of a mine filled with dangers, you should be able to find lots of treasures. Behind the confines of a locked door is the fairy world you are looking for. Unlocking the gate may be a bit of a twist, but the answer should be lying upon your wrist. That's what the message says. But, unfortunately, I have no idea which mine it is. That's all I can see. Here's your bracelet and the translation of the message. Thank you very much, Miss Clara. I'm going to show the message to my granddad. Maybe he'll understand. Bye. That was quick, Laura. Did you have the message translated? Mine... Door... Fairy... Twist... Wrist! Laura, this is fantastic! You're going to discover the fairy kingdom. Your great-grandfather told me about an old mine that used to be here, exactly where our house is today. If you search the cellar, you might find the entrance to the old mine. Laura, please do me a favor. Check in the writing desk. You'll find the key to the cellar and a statuette. If you find the fairy kingdom, 
give the statuette to Lumina. I carved it myself in memory of our encounter. But you must be careful, Laura. The key to the cellar and the statuette of Lumina. Is locked. I'll need the key to open it. the bars. Maybe I can reach it with a stick. I can feel a draft through this gap. There must be an opening behind the door. Maybe if I push very hard, I'll be able to move it. is blocking my way. I'll have to jump into it. Who knows, maybe it still works. The strange design carved in the door reminds me of something. Henry's grand. 
granddaughter, aren't you? I'm Lumina. I am very pleased that you found our kingdom. On behalf of all the fairies, I welcome you to our kingdom. Hello, Lumina. But how do you know who I am? Ah, we fairies know lots of things. For instance, I know that it was you who found the fairy's lucky charm. I was the one who lost it in a cave many years ago. But keep it. You are doing a wonderful job lighting it up again. You deserve to keep it forever. Thank you, Lumina. My grandfather says hello. He gave me something to give to you. It's a little statuette that he carved as a souvenir of your meeting. Oh, oh, thank you. It's lovely. What a charming, generous man your grandfather is. I have something for your grandfather as well. Here is a pretty music box. Please give it to your grandfather to thank him. To hear the music, you must first decorate it with six precious stones. Thank you, Lumina. Look around our kingdom, Laura. You will find the six precious stones. Decorate the box with each of these stones. You don't have to collect them. Just jump up to the stones and they will go straight onto the box. When you've finished, come back and see me. I've got all six stones. I must show them to Lumina. Congratulations. You're fantastic, Laura. You found the six stones so quickly. It wasn't easy, was it? 
You really deserve the lucky charm. I knew it. Now we can hear the music box. It will help your grandfather prove that fairies exist. It will also help him to fall asleep. Even though I know that he doesn't need music for that. And for you, Laura. Here is a magic wand. Use it in each room of your house. You'll see. You'll be able to do fantastic things with it. You can come and see us whenever you want. Goodbye, Laura. You can't leave the same way you came in. It's only an entrance. Wow! <laughs> I didn't know that this tree was magic! What a surprise! <laughs> Hi! Hey, Laura! I like your granddad. He told me a wonderful story the other day. He said that fairies live near our village. I love fairies. They fly like my kite. Granddad, I've come back from the fairy kingdom. It was fabulous. I met Lumina. She gave me a present for you. Oh, how marvelous. I'm so happy, Laura. You're wonderful. Oh, it's lovely. It's so pretty, so delicate. At last, I'll be able to prove to people that fairies do exist. It's extraordinary. It's charming, delightful. It's magnificent, fabulous. It's extraordinary, it's enchanting, mm, sumptuous. Well done, Laura. You have lit up a second facet. Oh, Laura, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's wonderful, it's amazing. It's a fairy tale. That's it, a fairy tale. That's the word I was looking for. Oh, thank you again for finding the fairy kingdom for me. Mom, you look busy. You're right, Laura. 
I'm in charge of organizing the party for the town's 700th anniversary. And it's tonight. There's so much work to do. I've got to write the invitations and the opening speech. Great! I can't wait to hear it. Oh, your little sister's going to wake up soon. I must check on her. With all this work, I don't know if... Laura, you're sensible and reliable enough to look after your little sister Elise. Would you do that for me, please? Yes, of course, Mummy. Wonderful. Thank you, Laura. That's very kind of you. Oof, now I'll certainly be able to finish in time. Well, I'll explain. When Elise cries, it means she wants something. It'll be up to you to work out what she wants. Everything Elise might be asking you for by crying is on the same floor as her room. When you've given her something, rock her gently. If she calms down, it'll mean that you've given her exactly what she needed. Do you understand? Yes, I understand perfectly. Good. It'll soon be time to feed her and there's no baby food. There's none left in the kitchen. You'll have to get some in town. Thanks again, Laura. You're a real help. And as you'll see, it isn't always easy to understand what Elise wants. Don't worry about it, Mummy. It's all under control. Carmen, I've come to get some baby food for my little sister, Elise. Of course, Laura. But in exchange for the baby food, I need you to do something for me. Look around the town and gather three mushrooms for me. I haven't any left. When you come back with the three mushrooms, you can choose whatever you like from the fruit and vegetables, and I'll make the baby food. Is that all right? Yes, that's fine. It says in the paper that your charming mother's going to write the speech for the village fete. I'm delighted. But she's not going to say who'll read it. She's keeping that a secret. And a very good idea, too. That'll be one more surprise this evening. <laughs> Have a nice day, Laura. Madam? Ah, Laura. Your mother's organising the fete this evening, isn't she? Yes, I know, I know. I hope it'll be fine. Everything would be ruined if it rained. Has your mother thought to listen to the weather forecast? Has she prepared the speech and sent out the invitations? I do hope so. And I trust the streets will be clean. It would be awful if someone slipped on something and hurt themselves. Sometimes I think it's only me who thinks about such things. Huh? Oh. 
a mushroom. Here's the first mushroom. Two more and I'll have my baby food. Hello, madam. Oh, hello, Lady Laura. My, how splendid you look today. <laughs> well, Laura, now I know it's your mum that's organising the fete this evening, I can hardly wait. I'm so excited. And your mum's told me that you, Laura, are... Oops. I, um... You'll see Laura tonight. It's a surprise. Mushroom. I found a second mushroom. Now I only need one more. A mushroom. Yippee! I found three mushrooms. Now I can go back to Carmen's. I've got to get the baby food. Elise must be really hungry. I haven't found my three mushrooms. Have a good look in the town. They're in several different places. Here you are, Carmen. I've got your three mushrooms. Thank you, Laura. They are magnificent. You can choose a fruit or a vegetable for Elise's baby food. Apples. Carrots, bananas, thank you, you've made a good choice, Elise is going to have a feast. There you are, it's ready. You'll see, Elise is going to love the baby food. Goodbye, Laura. Goodbye, and thank you very much, Carmen.
Oh, I hear crying again. I don't need to bother Mummy. I'll take care of it myself. Goodbye, baby, on the treetop. Okay, Elise, I understand. It wasn't that. Only you could speak. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. made her really hungry. <laughs> hmm, a little bird tells me this is not what she wants. Your little teddy bear. Oh, at last she's fallen asleep. She's so sweet when she sleeps with her teddy bear. Okay, now I must go and see Mummy. She'll be really pleased to hear that I did it. to get Elise to go to sleep. Oh, thank you, Laura. You've done a great job. I know how hard it is to get Elise to sleep. You're very resourceful. And thanks to you, I've finished writing the invitations. Now all I've got to do is write the opening speech for the party. Could you post these five invitations, please? I've got something to tell you when you get back. It's a surprise. Okay, Mummy. Just watch. I'll be really quick.
just one invitation posted. Now there are only four left. That's a second one done. Then all the invitations will be posted. Oh, Laura. I hope that's my invitation to the village fete you've just put through the letterbox. I can't wait. Oh, who knows? Maybe there'll be some romance this evening. <laughs> I love seeing couples get together. <laughs> Just one left to post. That's it! I did it! I've posted all five invitations. I have to go and tell Mummy. crying again. I don't need to bother Mummy. I'll take care of it myself. I can still hear crying. I'm finding it difficult to concentrate. Could you go and see what's wrong, Laura? Oh, I hear crying again. I don't need to bother Mummy. I'll take care of it myself.
Thank you very much, Nora. <laughs> Mummy, I posted the five invitations. Laura, I'm so proud of you. You've done very well. And Tommy has told me how kind you were to him. You are wonderful. I finished the speech, and I've decided that since you're a very reliable young lady, you will have the honor of reading it to open this evening's celebrations. Oh, thank you, Mummy. Thanks again, Laura, for looking after your baby sister. You were a big help. I can't wait to hear you read the speech this evening. Now three of my facets are lit up. Oh, thank you, Laura. Laura. Thanks. Oh, it smells nice, but I'll never get it finished. I've got to finish this cake for this evening's party, but I've completely forgotten to get the nuts that Carmen promised me. And I haven't got the time to go into town and get any. I've still got to make the filling and the icing. Oh, Laura, can you help me? OK, Rosie, I'd love to help you. Mm, that'll be one less thing to do. Thank you, Laura. Be quick, please. Carmen, the greengrocer, should have everything ready. I don't have enough time to finish this cake. I hope she's still got the nuts. Hello. With all due respect, Laura, I'm getting a bit fed up of not being able to read my paper in peace. A squirrel dropped nuts on it earlier and completely put me off. It took more than ten minutes to find the article I'd been reading. But perhaps that's the fault of the journalists. They write such small articles. Hardly surprising you can't find them again. this evening yes yes I kept them aside good thing too this is my last bag there you go thank you Carmen bye
Oh no! That was Carmen's last bag of nuts! I'll just have to catch that squirrel! That bag of nuts that the squirrel brought you is mine. I was taking the nuts to Rosie. She's making a cake for the party. The squirrel stole the bag while I was on my way home. What? You're saying that my squirrel has stolen your bag of nuts? And there I was, thinking he'd learn to put the nuts that he'd gathered into a bag. Oh, silly me. You naughty squirrel! I trained you to bring me nuts from the trees, not to steal them from people. Shame on you. I'm sorry, Laura. Here are your nuts. I do apologise. It's partly my fault. I had to train the squirrel to bring me nuts. That's what I eat most of the time. Oh, it's been a long time since I earned enough money to buy myself anything else to eat. If you want, Theo, I can leave you my nuts. Oh, no, no, Laura, that's very kind of you, but I can't accept. No, there are quite enough nuts on the trees. There's no need to take them from other people, is there, Squirrel? Thank you for your kind offer, Laura, and I'm sorry for what happened. Goodbye. Bye, Theo. Please, Laura, will you go and get them? The cake will never be ready in time for the party this evening. I'm back with the nuts. Thank you. Finally, I've got some nuts. Everything's all right then, isn't it? No, everything's not all right. Max has knocked the milk over. I've no more milk. I can't make a cake without milk. Oh, what am I going to do? I'll have to clean all this mess up. Please, Laura, can you go and get me some milk from Mr. Morris the Milkman? OK, Rosie. I'll be quick. Rosie, she's making a cake for the party this evening and we haven't got any milk in the house. I see. Well, as it's for the cake for this evening, I'll give you this bottle for free. Oh, uh, my back. Oh, oh, this dreadful pain in my back. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, right, my mind is made up. I really need an assistant. Take this, Laura. It's a job offer. If you meet someone who's looking for work, please give it to them. OK, Morris.
Thanks, Laura. I can't get you any milk. I can't get into the milk float. Please, climb in and help yourself. Thank you, Morris. Bye. You? Hello, Laura. I haven't got a job, but I haven't given up hope. I know that I'll find one soon and that I'll be able to eat something other than nuts. Meanwhile, I've always got my friends, the squirrels. Hello, Laura. Hello, Theo. I've got a surprise for you. What on earth? But it's, but it's a job offer to work with Mr. Morris the Milkman. That's wonderful, Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, hooray! I'm going to have a job. A job! I'm going to be able to buy myself some new clothes at last and all the food that I want. Thank you again, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. of milk. Hello, Theo. Hello, Laura. It's a lovely day today.
Here you are, Rosie. Here's your bottle of milk. Well done, Laura. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you, the cake will be ready on time. And I'm sure that everyone in town will enjoy it this evening. But I can't stop. I've got to get this cake baked. Thanks again, Laura. Excellent, Laura. Now four of my facets are lit up. You're wonderful. There's only one more to go. Daddy? Oh, it's you, Laura. You frightened me. It's um, nice to see you. Listen, I've done something really silly, Laura. Your mum asked me to do something very important for her, but I completely forgot. And then we had an argument, and it's really upset me. I wanted to say I was sorry, but I can never find the right words. I've... Laura, can you help me sort this out? Well, of course, Daddy. I don't like to see you unhappy. Thank you, Laura. You see, I've done something silly. I wanted Miriam to forgive me for something, so I wrote her a note of apology. I tied the note to the string of a balloon. I thought that the weight of the note would make it drift down to her window. The idea was for her to see the balloon, untie the note and read it. But the wind came up and blew the balloon towards the center of the town. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy, but I find that a bit funny. <laughs> well, I suppose it is funny in a way. But it's important that no one in town reads that note. It's personal. Please, Laura, would you find the balloon and bring me the note? Meanwhile, I'll try to think of another way to ask forgiveness. Daddy's letter. Yes, I've got it. Now I've got the letter. Daddy will be pleased. I'll go and tell him.
you are, Daddy. I've got your note back. Oh, thank you, Laura. I was very worried about it. And now listen, I've had a great idea while you were getting the note back. I'd like you to send it to your mother by carrier pigeon. I'd do it myself, but I don't want your mother to see me. As far as I know, there's only one carrier pigeon around here. Your grandfather trained it a long time ago. Somewhere in the house, there's a bird call. It's a special whistle to call pigeons. When you find it, go outside and whistle for the pigeon. Then tie the note around its neck. Then the pigeon will fly off right to Miriam's window. OK, Daddy. I'm sure it will work this time. Of course it will. And oh, Laura, when the pigeon flies towards Miriam's window, please go quickly and see her. I want you to tell me how she reacts. to tie the note around its neck. Go, Pigeon. Fly right up to my mother's room. Go on. Pigeon. Mm. I've loved you since the day we met, and I love you more and more with each passing day. I know I've disappointed you by forgetting the important favour you asked of me, but you shouldn't think I don't care about you simply because I am forgetful. My beautiful Miriam, I think about you and our love every minute of my life. Anthony. Were you angry with him, Mummy? Oh, you're there. Yes, I was a little angry, but I don't hold it against him anymore. <laughs> I love him so much. I don't hold it against him anymore, but I'd like to have a little fun at his expense. <laughs> Nicely, of course. Laura, I'm going to need you. We'll make him be even more romantic. He loves that. I'm going to write him a note asking him to invite me out dancing, just like he did the night we got engaged. I'll give it to you, and you will be the messenger. Oh. Oh. Quickly, go and take the note to your father. We'll see what new trick he'll think up to invite me out.
Oh, thank you, Laura. Anthony, I have no doubt about your love for me or mine for you. I forgive you. And I would like us to celebrate our love just as we did the night we got engaged. Please take me out dancing. Miriam. So, she wants me to take her out dancing. Alora, an invitation to dance is a classic thing, so I'm going to use a classic method. A bouquet of flowers. But not ordinary flowers, exotic flowers. Please, Laura, go to the florists and bring me back the most beautiful bouquet of exotic flowers imaginable. While you're doing that, I'll write a card. When you come back, we'll attach the card to the bouquet and you will take it to her. Oh, thank you for helping me, Laura. You're so kind. That's all right, Daddy. Write your note. I'll be quick, you'll see. A telescope. Violet, I need the most beautiful bouquet of exotic flowers in the whole wide world. Of course, Laura. I have the most beautiful exotic flowers there are. And these are my favourites. Only, I'm going to need your help. I've run out of water in my watering can. Can you go and fill my watering can, please? Meanwhile, I'll plant the flowers. Then when you come back, we shall only have to water them. Watering cans full. Now, off to violets. Mm -hmm. 
Look around the town, you'll find the fountain. Now go quickly and fill the watering can and you'll be able to have beautiful exotic flowers. Here you are, Violet. Your watering can is full. Thank you, Laura. You've really helped me. Now you'll see the magnificent flowers that will grow. And they grow quickly. These are very rare flowers. You can pick the flowers now. They make a fantastic bouquet. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks again for filling my watering can. That's perfect, Laura. What magnificent flowers. Here's the card I've written. Take it all to your mother and hurry back with her reply. Oh, I can hardly wait. For you. Oh, show me quickly. I want to see it. Oh, thank you. It's a magnificent bouquet. These flowers are marvellous. I've never seen anything like them. Oh, there's a little envelope too. Dear Miriam, I am inviting you to dance, but not just any dance. Of all the times we have danced together, one occasion stands out above all others in my mind. The opening waltz at our wedding. Even though we were turning and whirling gracefully across the dance floor, the intensity of our gaze made me feel as if our feet weren't even touching the ground. It's this dance I want to relive with you tonight. With all my love, Anthony. I remember that dance. It was wonderful. I wanted to have a bit of fun at his expense, but it never fails. He always knows how to get around me. Good. Now it's me that's nervous. To tell him that I accept, I have a little surprise. Laura, if you rummage through the drawers in my bedroom, you'll find a music score. Take it to him. He'll understand. And thanks for everything, Laura. You've been so kind.
This is where Mummy keeps her letters and her personal diary. Ooh, Mummy's jewellery. The music score. Mummy asked me to bring you this. She told me you would understand. What? Of course. I understand. She accepts. She accepts! That, Laura, that is the score of the opening waltz at our wedding. The orchestra played this waltz while we danced in front of all the guests. I had no idea she had kept that score. She's even more romantic than I am. Oh, Laura, thank you for all you've done for me. Without you, I don't know how I would have... Thank you for this short dance, Miriam. But I think we should stop now and continue our dance tonight at the town party. We shall dance together and all of our friends will see how much I love you. All right. I love you too. Thanks again, Laura. Thanks a lot. You've been wonderful. Well done, Laura. You've succeeded in lighting me up. You're brilliant. Now I'm your lucky charm. You have made me the, the happiest diamond in the world. But to be happy, you need more than a lucky charm. Everyone must look after their own happiness and the happiness of the people they love. Just as you've done for yourself and your family. If you remember, I told you that when people are happy, good things start to happen. It's time for the celebration to begin. The town folks are waiting for you, and you will see how happy they are. that fairies existed. Look what Laura has brought me from their world. Isn't it wonderful? It's a present from a fairy that I knew many years ago. You'll see, Theo. My daughter Laura is going to read the speech to open the celebration. 
May I tell you, Miriam, that your daughter is the most charming girl I know, and that I... Oh, Carmen, I have created the most magnificent cake with those notes of yours. Mmm, tell me what you think. Yesterday, in my crystal ball, I saw three fairies, yes, truly, with gossamer wings, which... Uh, 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 <clears throat> my friends, 700 years ago, our town was founded by a brave knight called Hype, whose statue you can see here. Today, we celebrate this anniversary by torchlight, as it was done in his day. Our town is magnificent, and it is all thanks to the people who live here. The evening is lovely and warm, so I'll cut this speech short because we are all eager to begin the festivities. I therefore declare this 700th anniversary celebration officially open. Hip, hip.